Over the past couple of weekends, we have been diving into Modern Warfare, looking at the individual characters who are wearing the ghost masks, and specifically comparing them to Call of Duty Ghosts and the characters in those games. Talking about the similarities and how it might be possible that Infinity Ward is actually planning a crossover between the Modern Warfare universe and the Call of Duty Ghosts universe. Now in last weekend's story video we briefly went over the Call of Duty Ghosts storyline and I talked about the cliffhanger at the very end of the game and I mentioned the fact that I was pretty certain I knew what happened in that cliffhanger and the overwhelming response is you guys wanted to hear what I thought of it. And in fact I would say I'm probably about 99.9% .9 sure I know what happens after the cliffhanger at the end of Call of Duty Ghosts. But to get to that cliffhanger, we first have to understand the story of the main character of Call of Duty Ghost. Which if you don't know his name, ladies and gentlemen, this is the full story of Logan Walker. Logan Walker has only ever been in one Call of Duty game. Call of Duty Ghost, and it begins with his father, Elias Walker, telling him and his brother, David Walker, the story of the ghost. A story where 60 Tier 1 operators were sent to a hospital to evacuate it against 500 enemy soldiers. And, well, things don't go so well for them. The 60 were cut down to 15. They wouldn't last another night, and the enemy knew it. Under the cover of darkness, they evacuated the hospital, sending only one of their own to lead the way. The rest returned to the line and took up positions beneath the bodies of their fallen brothers. As they lay in wait, the blood from the dead poured over them. The sand stuck to their skin like a shroud, changing them, anointing them. When the enemy drew near, the remaining 14 rose out of the desert sand. They were like hunters that couldn't be seen, using stealth their enemies couldn't defend against. When the men ran dry of ammunition, they used their blades. And when the blades ran dull, they used their hands. When the dust and sand had settled, only one of the enemy had survived. He was picked up in the desert, wandering aimlessly, traumatized. He expressed warnings to others of a force so menacing and unbeatable, it could only be described as supernatural. He called them ghosts. Now, at the time of Elias Walker telling this story to his sons, Logan Walker and David Walker, who is also known as Hesh, they both thought that this was a ghost story. A story to teach hard work and dedication, and that eventually that perseverance will pay off in the long run. And at this time, Logan was only 16 years old. He was born in 2001 in America, and it just so happens that this is when the Odin strikes take place. The Odin was a satellite in outer space owned by the United States Army that was essentially filled with giant lead rods and could shoot anywhere on the Earth at any time. Unfortunately, this satellite was hacked by the Federation Army and launched at California. Now, in this very first mission of Call of Duty Ghost, we see our three main characters scramble to stay alive, and as it turns out, all three of them do. But the main story of Call of Duty Ghost doesn't take place until the main Federation War, which is going on 10 years later. Uh, copy. Yeah, we're here. Go ahead. So 10 years later, Logan and Hesh are working for the United States Army. And the first mission picks up with the two of them working together with their trusty companion, Riley, the doggo. And this first mission picks up with them on patrol outside of the wall, the area that separates the Federation Army from essentially California and them invading. And on this mission, you take out several Federation soldiers, but before the end of the mission, you report back to your reporting officer, who just so happens to be your dad, Elias Walker. Now, your father's next instructions are to send the two of you into No Man's Land, a very dangerous area occupied by Federation soldiers. He says that he chooses you because you're the only two that he can actually trust, and sends you in there to gather intel. Now, on this mission outside of the wall, Logan 
Hesh, and Riley eventually stumble upon a captured soldier, wearing a ghost mask and being interrogated by the head of the Federation Army, Gabriel T. Rourke. Now, the character who is being interrogated is known as Ajax, and the three of you decide to try to go and lend a hand. This is when the three of you get attacked by wolves, and when it looks like all is going to be ended by these four-legged creatures, two other soldiers show up. Once again wearing masks, the two, Merrick and Keegan, save the day. And then the five of you are sent into the baseball stadium to rescue Ajax. And after fighting your way through many many Federation soldiers, you wind up in one of the baseball team's locker rooms and end up finding Ajax, who is in much less than good shapes, and greets you guys with some disturbing information. How is he? <coughs> it's bad. Son of a bitch. Hang in there, Ajax. Hang in. Rourke. It was Rourke. He's targeting. <laughs> Come on, hang in there, Ajax. He's gone. Damn it. So, clearly from that cutscene, Ajax doesn't make it, but he gives you some really important information. Rourke is hunting ghosts, and up until this point, you weren't sure if these ghosts were even real. Now, after evacuation from this mission, you find out that your father, Elias, has gone into battle and needs help, is stuck in battle and needs extraction. So your next mission is to go in and save your father. And things are going relatively well until you eventually get stuck in a burning building. And when it looks like everything is going wrong, you're getting attacked by an enemy soldier, your brother comes to your rescue. But he isn't able to save you from the fire. That is until you get extracted and one of the most surprising things in the entire game happens. So after that real touching moment where you find out that you could never let daddy down, some interesting realizations set in. First thing, that story your dad told you at the beginning of the game was 100% true and your father, Elias, was actually one of those soldiers. But to make things even crazier, another one of those soldiers was Rourke, the same guy who is currently hunting and killing all of the ghost soldiers. And now that you're inducted into the ghosts, your next job is to find and kill Rourke. Now, this is easier said than done. You fight your way through fireworks, underwater, pretty much you name it, until eventually Rourke finds you. He uses tear gas and captures all of the ghosts at once. family back together, isn't it? We're just missing our quiet friend. Where's Keegan? You know I'm not telling you a damn thing. No? Let's see if I can change your mind. No! Son of a 
Easy, Junior. I ain't even started with you yet. Logan, look at me. Look at me, son. That's right. You look good. So this is one of the most intense scenes of any Call of Duty game. You're being interrogated by Rourke, and specifically Rourke wants to know the location of Keegan, but your father, being the good soldier and friend that he is, will not tell him. But here's what you have to understand. Rourke is definitely the most mad at Elias. You see, years ago, they went on a mission together, and they ended up having to leave Rourke behind. He got lost on a mission, and they looked for him for days but they couldn't find him. The people who ended up finding him were the Federation soldiers. We'll dive more into that in a little bit. But during this interrogation, Rourke definitely takes out his angers on Elias, and, well, this is what ends up happening. Eddie's gonna get to watch you die. Okay, you hear me? Okay, you son of a bitch, I'm gonna kill you! I'm proud of you, Logan. Everything's gonna be okay. Oh, you are right, Elias. I'm not a ghost. I'm the man that haunts them and sends them back to the other side. So after your father tells you he's proud of you, Rourke kills him in cold blood right in front of you and in my opinion this is one of the saddest scenes of any call of duty game now after this you and your brother are still held captive but are later rescued by keegan and after escaping you're in full-on kill rourke mode so eventually you and your brother track down Rourke onto a train or a monorail and you track him down and you're fighting him on there and you realize he is going to escape on this train. So what you do is order an Odin strike onto the train so that Rourke can't get away. And this is exactly what happens. The train rail blows up, you fall into the ocean and you end up fighting Rourke underwater in one of the train cars. And eventually... Logan and his brother win when Logan shoots Rourke dead in the chest. And as it turns out, both brothers manage to escape out of the train car and swim up upon shore, where you see a really weird looking sunset with more Odin strikes landing on the train track. And everything is hunky-dory. The game ends, it looks like you've beat the Federation by killing Rourke. Right? Wrong. Halfway through the credits, this is what we see. been a hell of a ghost but that's not gonna happen there ain't gonna be any ghosts we're gonna destroy him together And that is it, the biggest cliffhanger ever in Call of Duty history. But there is a little bit more. After the credits play, this is what we see. And believe it or not, that is enough to tell us exactly what happened to Logan Walker after Call of Duty Ghost. But first, you have to understand what happened to Rourke to change him from a ghost to a ghost killer. You see, after he was lost in that mission, he was taken captive by Federation soldiers. And in one of the cutscenes in Ghost, they explain to us what the Federation soldiers did to him. There are ancient tribes deep in the Amazon who have perfected the art of torture over hundreds of years. The Federation embraced this heritage, enhancing it with more 
sophisticated methods. They kept Rourke in a hole for months. Feeding him food mixed with the poisons of exotic plants. As they broke down his body, they went to work on his mind. When his mind broke, they went to work on his soul. They rebuilt what was left, twisting him to their purposes. The process was excruciating and exacting. Rourke was their ghost now. The perfect weapon to use against us. They kept Rourke in a hole in the Amazon, giving him poison that changed his mind and eventually turned him against the ghosts. What do we hear Rourke say to Logan right at the end of the campaign? But that's not going to happen. There ain't going to be any ghosts. We're going to destroy him together. We're going to destroy them together. What is Rourke doing? He has taken Logan, put him in a pit in the Amazon, fed him poison, and is slowly changing his mind to fight against the ghost. Call of Duty Ghost 2 was supposed to be a story of how Logan has switched sides and is hunting the ghost, and I would guess eventually switches back to the good side to fight Rourke, but as of right now, we'll never know because there hasn't been and may never be another Call of Duty Ghost. But just as of right now, the story sits with Logan being switched to the dark side. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Logan Walker. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you guys. Literally today, we hit 600,000 subscribers on the channel and it's just really humbling. I just wanted to thank you guys for being around the channel. I'm so glad you guys enjoy the videos. I know you really like these story videos and of course, we're gonna keep them coming. So if you did enjoy, it's always appreciated if you hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on. It's the best way to stay up to date on all my videos. Once again, Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for enjoying my videos. Thank you for being here for this journey. But as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars. But we're making this too hard. And I want...